Hey guys, it's Morgan from Racer X Performance Tuning, and today we're continuing the series Why Tuners Love Haltech. Lately, we've been tuning a fourth generation Mitsubishi Eclipse on a Haltech Elite 1500 unit. Now, with the 4G Eclipse, there aren't many tuning options to begin with, and going with the Haltech ECU is going to be your best option, but it will require quite a bit of dedication to get everything set up correctly. One of the biggest challenges with tuning cars remotely is trying to figure out what the root cause of a problem is when things are not going as they should. Since we don't have the car physically with us, we have to rely on the data log to try and provide some insight into what could be causing the problem. The trick is in determining if the problem is related to the tuning or something physical on the car itself. With the data log, combined with years of experience, we can often suggest some possible issues to the owner, but more often the information from the data log is, let's say, correlated, but not necessarily causative of the issues. And here is where Haltech and its various engine state status information shines brightest and makes it a platform tuners absolutely love. Case number one, the first thing to happen is, once we got the car started and idling, Immediately, we noticed that the AFRs were super, super lean. So here we're running at a 24 AFR on a 14.8 target. And so typically, with um, just this information alone, I might go to the owner and say, hey, it looks like you might have a significant vacuum leak. Or maybe we've got an issue with fuel delivery. Um, as long as the, the tune is set up properly, we've got a base tune, uh, base fuel map that looks accurate, looks appropriate. Our our, dead, our, our flow rate is correct and our dead times are correct. There's nothing reason from the tune to expect to get this type of AFR. Now, that's great, but that's just an educated guess, as I said, correlated, but not necessarily causative. And we could go down a bunch of rabbit holes trying to figure out if there's a vacuum leak and where it might be and how to manage that. Maybe it's something with the throttle body. Just a bunch of stuff to look at that we found to be a reason for running lean over various uh, years of doing this. However, here's the beauty. In Haltech, we got this thing called uh, engine state. So right here we see engine state and it's telling us that it's limiting. Immediately that's a red flag, something's wrong. We can see open loop at idle is also in a limiting state, so it's not doing anything about managing idle and closed loop. If it were, we might definitely be able to correct some of this AFRs, but it's not doing anything at all there. We see the O2 state is also at engine limiter and it has plus coolant here because the coolant temperature is right now only 99 degrees Fahrenheit. So looking at this information, we know that something's not right and that's the reason why we're not getting um, fuel into the engine. And the next thing we notice right away here is, guess what? The throttle position sensor is at zero and it should almost never be exactly at 0% throttle position sensor. With that information in hand, the owner was able to go and check his drive-by-wire throttle body and find out that it's actually his wiring had a little problem with it. So he fixed the wiring and then boom, we were back up and running, no longer having this, uh, this limit condition on the engine and problem solved thanks to Haltech's engine state information. The next issue with it that we ran into was kind of a little bit of a rev hang sort of thing that was going on. So, you know, we would come off the throttle and here you can see we were right here off the throttle. It's at 3% uh, throttle position sensor. So we would expect things to start to ease up for us, but our RPMs were hanging. Here you can see they're at 2252 RPMs. Uh, the wide band was still reading things a little bit rich when at this point in time, we're expecting the injectors to be off and uh, the wide band to run fully lean. So. Taking a look around, once again, uh, the engine state information from Haltech helped us to solve what was going on here. And the first thing we're going to look at it, we can see that obviously Haltech knew that there was a D cell detected. It gave us a D cell detected state of true. And, you know, other parts of the engine saw that. We kind of went into idling. Um, and even the O2 control state saw that things were being in a D cell. So all of these engine states were kind of telling us information that would kind of back up the fact that we were in a D cell event. However, the one thing that you'll notice here most importantly is that the D cell cut state was inactive. And that's important because that's telling us why we're not in a D cell right now. So what was going on that we kept us out of a D cell cut state? So with that information at our disposal, we're able to take some of that 
engine state information and use that to try to figure out what was going on, what was keeping us from getting into the D cell cut state. So looking at a few things in our D cell calibration tables, one, we see that the D cell minimum RPM at uh, this temperature, coolant temperature of 193, puts us right here at 176 or above. It's going to say that in order to exit D cell fuel cut, and resume normal engine operation temperature, the RPM is going to come, have, come down below 1300. So once they've gotten down below 1300, we're going to say, okay, let's turn the D-cell fuel cut off and return to normal engine state. However, with our RPMs at 2252, even if we were in a D-cell fuel cut state, we'd never be able to exit it. But we're not there yet, so let's figure out what was going on that kept us from getting into D-cell fuel cut to begin with. Looking over here at our D-cell cut settings, we can see right here, the minimum vehicle speed is 35 miles an hour. That's going to say that you have to be going uh, at least 35 miles an hour or better and come off the throttle before D-cell fuel cut's going to happen. The reason that is is that you don't want to be having D-cell fuel cut go on and off, on and off, on and off while you're just trying to get the car moving and you're not really going very fast. It's going to cause all kinds of problems. So you really want to be kind of at a cruising speed, at least 35 miles an hour in this case, and then coming off the throttle and D-cell fuel cut's going to turn off the injectors, put things in a good state of just kind of slowing things down, saving you a little bit of fuel, and so forth. However, the thing we notice as we look through the rest of the data is that our actual vehicle speed, we can see it's zero miles an hour. In fact, as we look through the rest of the data log, we saw that it was always zero miles an hour. So if we were running at a vehicle speed of zero miles an hour, we could never actually ever get into D-cell fuel cut. Makes sense. So with that information, the user just went back, took a look at his vehicle speed sensor settings, the, the wiring, fixed all of that. Now we're getting vehicle speed back in play, and D-cell fuel cut starts to work just as it should. So once again, this is a great example of where the information provided, the engine state information provided by Haltech, solved us, helped us solve this problem, that is to say. I mean, normally, if you're getting a rev hang and you're trying to figure that out, I know for sure we would have been down a whole rabbit hole looking into the throttle body and the throttle body plate and the, the DBW settings and all of these things that actually had nothing to do with the issue at all. It was all about vehicle speed sensor. So right there, that's two issues that are solved thanks to the engine state information provided by Haltech. And you know what? It's yet another, yet again, another reason why tuners love Haltech. Uh, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. And you know what? We're going to be right back pretty soon with another video. I wish you guys a great day.